I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Genji's Dragon Blade is by far the most requested build by you, the fans. The build complements all the craftsman's skills in this shop. We're going to be using everything from traditional forging techniques to modern fabrication to get it done. In September of 1937, the Montezzo Railway Company got the commission from the Japanese government to produce the new swords for their military. The innovation that produced those swords was taking modern tool steel, making a pipe out of it, and inserting malleable iron in the center. This produces a perfect forge weld where the soft core is always symmetrical to the rest of the blade. At the time, they were heralded as the greatest innovation of the Japanese sword. Considering the Genji is basically modern-day Robocop, we're going to choose this method, which is both traditional and modern, to produce his katana. So we're gonna do something a little different on the lathe today. Typically, you see us put something round on here and make something round. Uh, what we're gonna be doing today, we've changed this chuck out to a four-jaw chuck, allows us to reach in and grab something that's not round. We're gonna drill this center hole. We're gonna step it up to a larger size, creating a center section so that we can do what's called mantetsu construction. We're gonna be forcing a piece of mild steel up inside of here prior to forge welding. That'll give us a high carbon outside. This is W1 tool steel. And on the inside, we're gonna have 1018 mild steel, and that's gonna give us the flexibility in the blade. While Ilya's been preheating the W1 section, I've got the inside mild steel pin sitting in dry ice. This allows the pieces to slide together with only minimal effort from the press. These pieces actually had about 10 thousandths interference fit and there was no way we could have put them together without doing this. Carrie made the high carbon steel pipe and we inserted a low carbon steel rod. The shrinking of the outer jacket locked the core into place. And the handle was welded onto the top. And now it's ready for forge welding. Although Genji's sword is the most romanticized weapon, his main weapon actually are three large shuriken, which we're going to cut out of some sheet metal, layer them together, heat treat them, and grind them to shape. After cutting the body of our shurikens, John's now gonna plasma cut all of his overlays that are gonna form the three points. To make sure he's at clean material and where the welds have taken well, Ilya now uses a hot cut, cuts most of the way to create his tip form, cools the piece in water, that allows the tip to just break right off. This is the extra material I cut off. I had Matt polish and etch the cross section, the white oval is where our soft core is, and the black is the high carbon outside. Now, you might be wondering, if I have a low carbon insert, 
Will it affect the point? Will it affect the edge? No. This is why the Smith clips over the tip this way and forges it over. I drew a chalk line approximating where the soft insert will be. And when I forged the piece over, I moved the soft all the way to the back, thus not affecting the cutting capabilities of the sword. Using the face of a cross peen hammer, Ilya bevels this entire blade. He'll do it in a couple of different heats. This will allow him to control the curvature a little bit more and he won't have to deal with straightening as much. Genji is the master swordsman and shuriken user and younger brother of the Shimada clan, Hanzo being the oldest and a master bowman. Genji disagreed with the clan dealings and didn't want to have anything to do with it. This enraged his older brother Hanzo and led to a very violent confrontation. Hanzo thought he had killed him, but he was turned into a cyborg, resulting in a very robotic-like sword. After heat treating, we're going to notch in the spine all the way down to account for some overlays and some lighting fixtures. But to get things started, I'm just going to do a pretty traditional grind and then hand it off to Ilya for heat treat. Once the surface of the blade is cleaned up, it's ready to receive the clay. Here I warmed up my stone on which I mix the clay. What the clay actually does, it protects some of the blade from exposure to the quenching medium. In our case, it's going to be oil. When working with modern materials, the claying of the blade is entirely unnecessary, except for maybe aesthetic purposes. However, we still have to attach fiber optics and electronics to the back of the blade. And it's way easier doing that when you're working with a soft part of the blade rather than hard. So one can argue that this procedure for this specific build is completely necessary. Now that John's welded these up for uh, Genji Shuriken, so we're gonna go ahead and start grinding the edges on these. They're real thick right now, and we've gotta get these real narrow so they're nice and sharp for throwing. Being very careful not to bump the clay off on the sides of the furnace, Ilya watches to bring this sword up to a nice, long, even heat, brings it out, and then takes it into the oil quench. As the blade comes out of the oil quench and before it fully sets up, Ilya goes over to the vise, checks it for straightness, and then sets it up to let it cool. After quenching and then tempering the blade, it's time to get it closer to its final shape. For these katana blades, you don't really want to add a secondary bevel. When you're done polishing, they should be darn near sharp. Matt has taken the blade through most of the grits. The sword has a pronounced kisaki, which means the Ikoda line that differentiates the tip from the rest of the blade is very prominent. Normally, this is set up on flat whetstones. However, a platen grinder, such as what we have here, is a decent replacement for such. Up until this point, the shaping of the sword blade has been mostly traditional, but from here on out, we're gonna do some modern techniques to make this a blade that a cyborg would use. So first step I have to do is I'm gonna trace our overlay. 
We're gonna sandwich the blade on either side with two steel overlays. Underneath that, it's gonna be some plexiglass and then some lighting along the spine to give us that green dragon blade glow that we all love in game. So from here, I'll pull out what I drew. So I'll go in and tweak those and make those all perfect. Then I'll hand it off to Carrie and he'll get two overlays cut. For our hilt and our handle assembly, I'm gonna cut one part flat and then we're gonna hot form it around. Same here, two pieces hot formed over. Our power supplies are gonna be hidden in here where this round cylinder is. So we'll just get all our parts cut, hot formed, and get rolling. Now that we have our design for our overlays finalized, Carrie's gonna put them into the plasma computer and cut them out. We need one for each side of the blade. So he's gonna mirror the drawing and go right to it. The material that we decided to make these overlays from has been sitting outside for a little while, so it's got some surface corrosion. Since that's the case, I'm going to use several sanders with progressive grits, rough off the material, and then fully finish the surface. After hand plasma cutting out his pattern, Ilya is now going to move out to the forge. He has to turn that flat piece into a nice round ovate piece that will work as the guard for our sword. These overlays, they're gonna lay on top of this blade and they're gonna cover the diffuser. We're gonna make our diffuser in Lexan we have here. We'll cut that, it'll be underneath, and then we'll be able to set full strip of LED panels underneath, and that's gonna diffuse the light and give us the glowing edge. I may have to do some sanding to get an exact fit, but I'm gonna to go to this small bandsaw and cut out the plastic to make it match as close as possible to the steel overlay. Using the sheet metal overlay as a guide, Kerry now matches the notches up on the plexiglass. He's going to cut them on a bandsaw and then true them up later by hand. Since he freehanded his pattern, he realized after forming that it's a little long. He's going to trim the fat, then weld it together and make that weld nice and flush to the rest of the surface. So I've worked out how this overlay and lighting system is going to work. So I've got this taped down, but it's actually double-sided, so I've got LEDs on both sides. I'm gonna notch into the steel. It's gonna sit on the back of that spine. The diffuser will lay over top. We'll have to cut the back of it to make sure that it gets right where we want it to be in the final. Once we have the blade satin and polished, it should really show this and should diffuse the light over the entire surface. Now that we have everything fit just right to the blade, it's time to start welding it together. John's gonna use an aluminum spacer just to make sure his thicknesses stay true, weld the seams, and then we'll blend them all off on the sanders. There's quite a few pieces that go together to make this handle. The first is the one that's going to hold our cylinder, and it's also like a trigger guard. Ilya formed it, and now he's cleaning it up on the scotch brite wheel to give it a nice satin finish. After looking at this pommel, we realize that it's a lot like the production pommels that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm gonna go to the sanders, grind a bevel, and then knock all the corners off. Should be about ready for assembly. This 
handles a lot like a traditional saya, but it has a futuristic looking shape. Billy's gonna sand that shape, then return to the mill to carve all of his detail in. If you look at the Dragon Blade, you'll notice that it has a green cylinder underneath the guard. I believe this is a power source. We're just gonna use some tubing, cut it to length, and paint it green later. So we have the majority of the pieces here ready to go. This is our diffusers. We've sanded one side of them so that they're smoky now, so they'll be a little bit brighter to hold that light better and transfer it. Our cover is gonna get blackened, uh, and, but everything should fit up on the blade nicely now. This is the primary section of the guard. What will become our handle with some overlays. We've got some color to lay in, a little bit of shaping and some detail. And then to finish it out, you'll see that pommel that Matt made on the end. Overwatch has quickly become one of my favorite games to play. This build was our first from the series, and I'm very proud to say that we've brought Genji's Dragon Blade to life. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.